Welcome back to a book haul. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now for today's video, I'm doing a book haul but in a different location and I was too lazy to bring the books back into my room so I thought I would just do it in the hallway that you guys are very familiar with now because if you guys haven't watched it yet, in my last video I did a book organization video where I focused on the hallway right outside my room. I had a lot more books than I wanted in my hallway so I cleaned them all out and I moved them to the basement but since then I have moved some books outside of my room into the hallway once again and I just want to haul them so that I can better organize them and put them probably downstairs in the basement or something. But before we put them to the basement, I wanted to show you what I got. These are books that I purchased myself on Thrift Books or Chapters Indigo, or I got it from publishers, but majority of the books are books that I bought. So let's get started. I like to go to thrift stores a lot and I ended up finding a hardcover copy of this one called The Prince of Midnight by Lauren Kinsell and I really like this cover because lots of my friends have been talking about Fabio on his Joker Romance books. This is a hardcover edition so unfortunately it doesn't have the step back but it does have a pretty back cover of this. I always wanted a copy of this book so I'm excited to get it and it's not too thick so I feel like I can read it pretty quickly. Another book that I did pick up is this hardcover edition of Lisa Claypez called When Strangers Marry and then it does have a very beautiful back cover like this this one and I think I've read this book. I'm not sure if I actually enjoyed it but I read this a long time ago back when I was binging historical romances for the first time ever because I was getting myself into historical romances and Lisa Claypest was obviously a staple in my reading. Another book that I did pick up is this one from Jude Devereaux. This one's called The Raider. Honestly I was debating whether or not I should buy this book because I don't know if I'm gonna read it but I know that Jude Devereaux played a vital part in historical romances and how you know the craft was developed so I wanted to buy some of her books. Also what convinced me to buy this book was because he's wearing like a little tuxedo mask thing and I think that's so cool. Another book that I did pick up is this one called Highland Rose by Catherine Linden. The reason why I bought it was simply because of the step back. I think that these half step backs are so cool and obviously they're gorgeous to have. I'm pretty impressed that none of the step back itself is too damaged especially since it is a thrifted copy i don't know much about this book but i think it's about a heroine who needs in dire help of our hero saving her then i picked up another thrifted book this one's called a scandalous adventure by lillian merrick i've never heard of this author before i've never seen this series before but what captured my attention of this book is the fact that it is kind of like a royal historical romance our heroine looks exactly like the princess that has gone missing so our hero who is like the royal guard asks her to pretend to be the princess so that he doesn't get fired and I think that this one's going to be such a fun romance. Um, I'm starting to really like historical romances from source books Casablanca so this is exactly where it's from so I'm excited to dive into the series and let you know my thoughts on this one. Another book that I did pick up is this one from Lindsay Kelk. This one's called On a Night Like This. I think this is kind of like a celebrity romance. I think our heroine is a assistant to a very famous singer and Lindsay Kelk has written like a lot of like English romantic comedies and I've read or I tried to read one book of hers before and I didn't think that I really liked the writing but I ended up picking up her latest novel because of the cover. It's totally a cover buy and I just wanted it on my shelf. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this because I actually don't like celebrity romances but at least I have the option to pick this one up if I do want to try that subgenre once again. And then I picked up two books from Lauren Lane. This is part of her Mont Lake series. I feel that I like her Mont Lake romances more than her romances that she is currently publishing with Atria Books. I just feel like her writing is a lot steamier. There's more chemistry. There's no more closed door scenes in Mont Lake romance. So I'm really excited to pick up this book called Yours in Scandal. And then this one's Yours to Keep. If I remember correctly, these heroes are either um, running to be a mayor of the New York City or I think a bad boy because he does have a tattoo. My friends have read these books and they loved it and enjoyed it so I'm happy to read them too. And then another book that I did pick up is obviously the latest romance from Colleen Hoover. This one's called Reminders of Him. Honestly I avoided spoilers for the most part. I haven't read Colleen Hoover in such a long time and I'm excited to dive back into the emotional writing of Colleen Hoover. I'm sure people either really liked it or really hated it but I hope to read this one soon especially when I'm emotionally ready to 
to read something that's going to probably give me a lot more tears than smiles. Then I got an arc of this book called Boss Witch by Anne Aguirre. She wrote um, this book called Witch Please that was published last year which is about like a heroine who has witch abilities and she runs like a computer repair shop like an IT repair shop. So this one is the second book in that series. I am excited to read it but I also didn't really like Witch Please because I thought that the writing was pretty slow but nonetheless thank you to the publisher who sent me this arc copy. This book comes out on April 5th. And then I got another arc. This one's called Welcome to the Neighborhood. This one is also on sale on April 5th. It's by Lisa Rowe. This one is about a single mother who has a 11 year old daughter and now she is dealing with a small town that is full of gossip and drama. So we're going to follow like the life of her basically. Um, I'm not really sure if I really enjoy this cover. I feel like her eyes are a little bit scary but excited to read it since Abby Waxman who is a famous women's fiction author that I really enjoy actually quoted this book. Then I picked up another new release from Berkeley. This one's called Lease on Love by Fallon Ballard. I've read some reviews on Goodreads and I've heard great things. It's like a four out of five stars rating from people that I trust which I'm really excited about. This one is about our heroine who has been passed up on promotion for over a decade now and now she has to kind of like reevaluate her life to see if she is still happy with things. So it's going to be a lot about finding yourself and then obviously falling in love with someone who you know might not be emotionally ready to take on something that is like a long-term relationship. Our hero apparently is grieving over the unexpected death of his parents. Then I picked up this book called How to Love Your Neighbor and this one's by Sophie Sullivan. This one's actually sent to me from the publisher. I think I already hauled a copy of this book in my previous haul so once again um, I have two copies. This one's basically about our heroine who needs to fix up a beach house and then our hero on the other side I think wants to sell the beach house or something like that and they have to like work together. I'm excited to read it but I've seen some reviews of this book already and it's not too good so I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. Another book that I purchased myself is this one called Electric Idol by Katie Robert. Lots of people actually didn't like Neon Gods but I actually liked Neon Gods and didn't like a lot of Katie Roberts like indie published romance novels so I'm excited to read this one. I've heard people get really like hyped up about this book and I think they enjoyed it overall so I'm waiting for like the perfect moment in my life to read Electric Idol because I just like sinking back into that like dark Greek mythology retelling romance style genre that I love so much. And then I got this book called Sweet and Sour by Debbie Michiko Florence and this is one of her latest novels that are set to come out this year in July. It's a middle grade novel. I love Debbie's writing. I highly recommend you to check out her books. I know most of the people that are watching this right now are not middle grade you know readers. They are older and they read a lot of romance. They read a lot of historical romance but please trust me when I tell you that her books are like the cutest fluffiest things ever. The romance between her characters are so cute and they always leave me in tears because of all the other lessons that you learn from middle grade novels and her books are so representative of the Asian culture of like what it means to be Asian American and it's just so so good. So I'm so excited to read her latest novel and I think this book also includes like some k-pop mentions too as well because this is BTS's uh, cookie toy so I'm super excited to read this one. Can't wait to cry. Then I got this book from the publisher from St. Martin's Press. This one's called Reputation by Lex Crocher and this book comes out on April 5th once again. So April 5th is a very big publishing day. So this one is titled as Bridgerton meets Gossip Girl with a dash of Jane Austen in this Regency era rom-com debut with a deliciously feminist twist. So I assume this is about a group of girls who unfortunately gets their reputation in tatters and now they have to fix themselves before they kind of lose that ability to get married and things like that but then obviously they also stand up for themselves too as well. I've read a blurb about this book and it does sound interesting and it's something that I definitely want to read because I love historical romance. Another book that I picked up is this one called One Night on the Island by Josie Silver and this one is from the author who writes like a lot of emotional books. So she wrote One Day in December and then The Two Lives of Lydia Bird. Now I didn't like One Day in December but I really 
really enjoyed the two lives of Leo Bird. I thought that it was super emotional. It's basically about our heroine who loses her husband, but then she is able to take some pills and then she can like see her husband again. And so it's about grief and letting go of things that you've lost, including people. So this one is about our heroine who is single. She just turned 30 and then she decides to go to a remote Irish island so that she can enjoy her life which is a far cry from London and everything so this is very different from her and then our hero is also there too because he's looking to find some time for himself so that they can he can work to better himself as well and then they both get to know each other and then they both start seeing each other I assume and then I guess it, there's like more emotional things that do happen especially with Josie Silver's books then we have this book called The Roughest Draft and I picked this up myself this one's called this one's by Emily Wibberley and Austin Sigmund Broca. I honestly never remember how to say his last name, but these two authors are actually a couple in real life and they co-wrote a lot of young adult novels. This is their debut romance novel and I read it and this one felt a lot like Beach Read mixed with a lot of other like Emily Henry novels all congealed together. Honestly, I didn't like this book and I'm going to give like a full review to come, but this one just didn't sit right with me. There's a lot of emotional cheating involved. Our heroine and hero co-wrote books together or they co-wrote one, one book and it was really great. It was a New York Times bestseller. It made them really famous, but then something happened and then they fell out of their relationship. So they never wrote a book ever again, but then because they both are struggling in their writing careers and they're not making enough money and they need money for life, they they decide to work together again to write another book and then this is about them discovering what happened before and what made them fall apart and then also come to realizations of their feelings for each other. I didn't like this one. Next we have this book called Good Girl Complex by Elle Kennedy. Honestly I've seen so many bad reviews of this book. I think it sits at a 3.5 out of 5 star rating on Goodreads and that's horrible so I'm really sad because this would have been my first Elle Kennedy book. I think I'm still gonna read it because lots of people just have a very high expectation for Elle Kennedy novels so I think after they had this high expectation they expected more from her but then I never read any so maybe I would actually really like this book but this one is about our heroine who is a people pleaser she always follows the rules so she's a very type a personality and then our hero is a complete opposite of her you know he's rough around the edges raw and candid and then it's basically a good girl bad guy type of relationship I don't know and then I picked up a novel called A Perfect Equation by Elizabeth Everett and this is book number two in the Secret Scientists of London series. I read the first book, uh, A Lady's Formula for Love, and I actually really enjoyed it. It's about a group of women who are really into sciences, and this is a historical romance. So basically, it's very uncommon at that time for women to become a scientist. But regardless, they work together in an agency to, you know, do things, and then they get themselves into a lot of trouble. Our heroine is now in charge of the agency, and then our hero has to step in to help her because um, something's happening with the agency and then this is probably like an enemies to lovers romance. I quite enjoyed the first one so I'm pretty excited to read the second one of this book. Then I picked up this book called Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. Honestly I've read my friend's reviews of this book and unfortunately they didn't really like it. They thought it was very slow burn, very tame for a Tessa Bailey novel and I actually hated the first book in this series called It Happened One Summer. So I'm very skeptical that I would also like this book too as well, which is very disappointing because I like Tessa Bailey's writing and I think that she is a great romance author. It's just that some of the books that I've been reading from her are just not worth the hype and I just don't like them as much as everybody else. Then I picked up this book called Mr. Wrong Number by Lynn Painter and this one is about our heroine who always has bad luck and she is known to be the screw up of the family so she's definitely a black sheep of the group. Meanwhile our hero is um her older brother's like best friend and they both have to keep a distance to each other because of respect of the older brother or something 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 like that um but they obviously get stuck together a lot and then they start developing and growing feelings for each other so i think this will be a pretty fun romance then i have this book called don't go stealing my heart by kelly siskand and i actually read this book already i really enjoyed this book if you guys are looking for a very optimistic pure kind-hearted read this one is definitely it i've never read 
a book with two characters that are just so freaking wholesome and good. Our heroine is actually an art thief and she is like the modern day Robin Hood. She steals a lot of stuff to auction it off so that she can use that money to donate back into charities and things like that and she works for like this secret organization so her eyes are set on this like really expensive priceless painting that our hero just so happens to own and then i think if i remember correctly our hero is actually the mayor of the town or like he's something that is very important in the town i think he owns like a really big company in the town that employs basically the whole town so he keeps the economy in the town running and I really enjoyed this book I can't wait to read book number one three and four now so yeah go pick her up then I picked up this book from the thrift shop this one's called The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett I've always wanted to read this book but I didn't know if I wanted to read the hardcover or like the paperback and then I found this one at the thrift shop for 99 cents so I had to get it basically this is about twin sisters who are identical but they grow up together in a very small town and then they run away and then now this book focuses on how the separation of the two sisters like how they grow apart and what's impacting their relationship i'm pretty sure this book was recommended to us by barack obama so i'm like freaking excited to read this book it's also a good morning america book club pick so i know this one's going to be a really interesting heartfelt read but once again i went to the thrift shop and i picked up a lot of books simply because of the beautiful step backs so this one is taboo by susan johnson i really like this one i don't know it just felt like a profile picture of a soldier then I have this book from Susan Crinard, and this one's called Starcross. I thought this was really interesting. I think this is like a historical romance sci-fi novel. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to read it, but I would want to try it just to see what the genre is like. The artwork is stunning. Then we have this book from El Eloisa James, and this one's called The Taming of the Duke. And this has a beautiful step back like this one too as well. Honestly, me and Eloisa are not that close. Like, I like her personality on TikTok and everything, but her books sometimes are a huge hit or a huge miss for me. Then I have this one from Iris Johnson. This one is called Reap the Wind. I really like this one. I think this is more of a contemporary romance than a historical romance, but I just really like the cover of this and the facial expressions of our models. Then I have this book from Sarah Bennett and this one's called A Seduction in Scarlet. Basically I collected a lot of Sarah Bennett books that I will show you later on in this haul and I've heard amazing things from people like you who are watching my videos and who commented that they like her, their, her writing so I basically went back and collected the majority of her backlist. Then I finally have a very nice condition of this book called Captives of the Night by Loretta Chase. This is like probably my third attempt of getting this book with this cover but basically my last book that I bought with the same cover had like the corner ripped off and it broke my heart but finally I found one with a good condition. Then I have this beautiful book by Sherry Henke and it's called Broken Vows and it has a really pretty step back like this one. I found the step back on Pinterest and immediately had to go to thrift books to go buy myself a copy. Then I have this book called Prince of Shadows by Susan Crinard. Again, this one's a paranormal historical romance. I'm pretty sure our hero changes into a wolf like the one in the background. I ended up buying a Sarah Bennett lot on eBay. So I have a lot of Sarah Bennett books. This one's called Once He Loves. This one is called Mistress of Scandal. This one is called The Rose and the Shield. This one is called The Lily and the Sword. This one is called Her Secret Lover. This one is called A Most Sinful Proposal. This one is called Lady Astray by a Rake. And this one is called Kissing the Bride. This one is called Rules of Passion. This one is called To Pleasure a Do. And then I have this other book that I picked up from the thrift shops again. And this one's from Linda Ladd and this one's called Lilacs Unlaced. I bought it from Thrift Books and it has a beautiful cover like this. It's a two page step back and she's wearing like a quilt and it's set in Scotland. So that's pretty cool too as well. I bought like a whole Catherine Cutler lot and I never moved it upstairs yet, but I did find one from the thrift shops. This one's called The Offer. I thought this had like little Red Riding Hood vibes, so I had to get it. Then I have a Rosemary Rogers book. This one's called All I Desire. I've heard good things about Rosemary Rogers, and I really like the two-page step back. I think this is a Western historical romance. Then I have this book, and I really like the cover of this one. This one's called A Stranger's Kiss. 
I thought it was really cool. Then I have this old school cover of Sandra Hill's novel called Tarnished Lady. I've always seen this on thrift books and I always wanted to get it, so I'm glad that I got it in a local thrift shop. Then I have this book called The Duke's Indiscretion by Adele Ashworth. I heard or seen a lot of Adele Ashworth's books before, so I'm excited to try her out. Then I have this book from Tammy Hogg called Cry Wolf. I think this is maybe a paranormal romance? I think so. I think it's like a paranormal contemporary romance. Look at this like artwork and the facial expressions. Everybody looks so worried. Why? I don't know. I have to go figure it out. I also bought a Jillian Hunter lot too as well, but those books are also downstairs. So I never moved them upstairs. But regardless, I have this one book that I bought from the thrift shops. This one's called An English Scoundrel. I really like this one because look at her like little detail of her pink slipper. It's so pretty. I love it so much. Then I have this book from Danielle Allen. Alan. This one's called Arms of a Stranger and I'm kind of disappointed in the book that I got from Thrift Books because this is like beat up, it's gross, it's stained, the cover feels weird and it looks really dirty but I think I can like clean it up if I just use a wet wipe. Then I picked up a random Meredith Duran Lady Be Good novel. I want to try her. I think the cover is pretty cool too as well. And then I have a Stephanie Lawrence novel called The Pursuits of Laura, Lord Kit Cavanaugh. And this is like book number two in the series. But the reason why I bought it is because Stephanie Lawrence books from like, I think this is like Harlequin. They have really, really pretty step backs. So if you guys want pretty step backs, go check it out. Also, her hair is just like so big. So I was able to receive a copy of this book called A Song of Secrets by J.C. Lee. She is Korean American and if I remember correctly J.C. Lee is a lawyer turned author. She writes so many Harlequin romances now and she also writes romance novels for St. Martin's Press. So definitely go check her out if you want some diverse romance. This is the start of a new series I believe and our heroine is a celloist. Like as you can tell. Super excited to read this book. It's out now. Go pick it up. Then I picked up this book by Joe Beverly. It's called Something Wicked. It has a beautiful two-page step back like this. So gorgeous. I love it so much. I have an old school copy of this book called uh, The Outlaws, Rafe. And I think it focuses on Rafe, the hero. And it has a very pretty step back like this too as well. I love fields in my step backs. And then I have this book by Catherine Hart. It's called Splendor. And I think this one's like a pirate romance because our hero clearly has a sword here. He has a big earring and then he also has like a ship in the background. So excited for pirate romances. They're my favorite. And if you're looking for more pretty step backs, there's this one. There's this author called Barbara Dawson Smith and this one's called Romancing the Rogue. It has a beautiful two-page step back. I really like her hair. I feel like her hair kind of looks like mine now since I cut my hair. Very pretty. I have this other one called Too Wicked to Love. It's another beautiful two-page step back. I think it looks so nice. And then unfortunately I picked up two books from Candace Proctor called The Bequest and also September Moon. It's unfortunate because I picked these books up from thrift books and I thought that they had the really pretty step backs but they actually don't. So these are just kind of beat up copies of a book that um, I don't really know what's it about. So I just want to show you guys two more books because this book haul is going on forever already but this is one of the books I want to show you. This one's from Elizabeth Lowell called Only His and has a beautiful two-page step back too as well. I think this one is a historical western novel because of all the freaking horses and like them being in a desert with a fire. And then the last book that I want to show you guys is this one from Connie Mason called A Love to Cherish, which I also think is a Western romance too as well, judging from the clothes that she's wearing. I mostly bought it because of her beautiful outfit that she's wearing and how beautiful this cover is. But anyways, that is it for my book haul. Hopefully you guys enjoyed all the books that I've hauled and got some ideas on what to collect if you guys are a collector like me. And I'll see you guys again in a new video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.